Check, check, check. Welcome back. Uh, that last fight, I know immediately after the last fight, you know, you, you, you were pretty positive, even though it was kind of a weird ending. Were you able to keep that same feel when you went home, or was it like a little bit, ah, oh, I didn't, didn't quite get what I wanted there? Uh, I was bummed, you know. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's a small room. Um, I, was, I was a little bit bummed, honestly. Um, I was happy, mostly, mostly happy with my performance. Felt I had a great performance. Um, obviously, the ending is what we wanted. Um, it's been a real tough. I've been inactive for eight months. It's been a real, uh, the past, the past eight months has been real tough for me, honestly, in certain ways. It's been a real, uh, it's been a real test. Um, but I've come back better, you know. I, I've, I've really had to deal with a lot of things in these past eight months. Being inactive and having a lot of uncertainty in my life, you know, and I got a mortgage to pay. You know, I have people that I want to make proud. I have all these goals that I want to check off the list and I can't do that inactive. Not only was I inactive, I also didn't have a UFC contract secured, you know? So there was a lot of uncertainty these past, um, eight months. And I, 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 you know, I walked, walked through the fire, came out better. I got a, uh, I got a new contract signed. I busted my ass doing three or four sessions a day. And, uh, and I'm, I'm ready to go to the next one. I'm ready to focus on, I, I've been focused on Saturday. I'm ready to just get another win. You know, that's the, been the biggest lesson since that fight is just what's in the past is in the past, man. You just got to keep pushing forward. And, and that's what I'm focused on is, is constant progression. Well, and I don't want to make you live through it all. Right. I know you want to move forward, but I was curious about that. Like, I mean, did they give you any idea of like why it took, I mean, you've been around for a while. You put on entertaining fights. It doesn't seem like a hard decision for him to make. Uh, I don't know, man. It's a weird thing. I've, I've, I've kind of grown up in this company you know, I got here, I was 23. I was a baby still. I'm 31 now. Like that in and of itself, as I get older, something that my, my coach Danny Castillo, um, has kind of helped instill in me is just like the pride and longevity, you know, like a lot of people are here and they're gone before you realize it. I've, this has been my whole life. This has been my job. When people ask like, Oh, what? Like, I don't have a lot of careers to list. Like, this is it. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the UFC. I've been in the UFC. Um, so it is a little weird to me. I've been here for so long and I've never been in a boring fight. And there's not a lot of people who could say that. And uh, to me, it's a no brainer. Like, I don't think I should have to wait eight months between fights. But again, man, I'm just real focused on like controlling the controllables. All I can control is myself, you know? And I put in so much work and I did everything to the best of my ability. And now I'm ready to go perform. And like, that's all I really care about, man. I just. I can't focus on the other shit, you know? And as long as I win fights, everything else will work itself out. I got a nice, nice new contract that's looking pretty. Uh, and um, I'm excited to I'm excited to go get my money. So the mortgage payment's not a problem now. The mortgage payment's not a problem. <laughs> and here's the thing, the mortgage payment, thankfully, um, because as I've gotten older, I've gotten smarter with money. The mortgage payment wasn't a problem in those eight months. But there's definitely there's definitely like a voice in the back of your head when you've gone eight months without any income. You know, thankfully I'm, I'm prepared for that, but you don't want to go another eight months. You'd like to see a light at the end of the tunnel. And when there isn't one, it's like how long, it's a question of character. It's like, how long can you, can you push forward when there's no finish line? Like how long are you down to sprint as hard as you can when you don't know where the finish line is? When you got to really, um, you got to take a hard look at yourself and, and you got to ask yourself some hard questions. And I got through it. I'm better for it. I know we're here to talk about fighting, but I'm curious. Is, is that kind of the hardest part of this profession, right? Is like you get these fat checks like once or twice a year, yeah. and you got to realize like you're not going to be fighting when you're 50. You right. know what I mean? It's not like a normal job. Is that the hardest part is understanding like this money looks like a lot, yeah. but it's not if you don't take care of it? Yeah, 100%. You know, um, it, it, it's kind of – everything is relative, right? So like what used to be a lot of money – isn't a lot of money to me now. And what used to be a big problem isn't a big problem now. You know, you just kind of, you just kind of grow, you grow into things as you get older. So like, I remember I made my USC debut, I made 16 grand and I was like, that's it. I'm rich, bitch. Call my mom. We don't have to live like this anymore. Like where well, I'm set. Like I'm doing, I made 16 grand. I'd never seen that much money in my life. Like I was ready to, I was ready. I was like, you couldn't tell me anything. And I blew through all of it. And then at the end of the year, I fought one more time. I think I made like 30 grand that year. And I thought I was, I thought I was living. And then they were like, Hey, uh, you owe nine grand in taxes. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have nine grand. Like I haven't seen nine grand for months. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got nothing in my bank account. So 
you know, going from that being 23 and blowing through checks to getting bigger checks and being smarter with the money, it's just, it's all relative, you know, it's like, you just have to, you have to learn and you have to adapt. You, there's no amount of money that you can't blow through, you know, so you kind of have to start, um, you have to be smart. And, and also I think it's a, it's a growth thing too. Like, uh, things don't make me as happy as they used to. Like it used to be about things. Like I got to spend money on these things that I didn't have growing up. And now it's like, you know, I don't, I don't try to fill the void with things. There's still a void. I'm still trying to fill it, but like, <laughs> don't, I don't get This is not self-help. Like I'm not, I don't have it figured out, but I don't, I don't fill it with stupid shit anymore. You know, I try to fill it with meaningful experiences and, 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 um, and, and people I love. It's awesome, man. All right, let's talk about fighting now. Uh, so you, you just need a name, right? I mean, that's it. You want to yeah. fight. They give you Joy Anderson Brito. I, I imagine you probably don't know much about him. Here's a guy that's fighting for a second time in the UFC. Right. Is that disappointing or do you care? I mean, he's certainly no. a dangerous fighter. Yeah, he's dangerous. I mean, I, I don't care because it's like, I, I don't know. It, everyone at the UFC is good. Like, and I, I think people who aren't involved in the sport as much don't understand. You guys understand, obviously. Fighters understand. But people are like, oh, he's only fought one time in the UFC. It's like, yeah, but he had to, yeah, but he hurt 12 people to get here. Like, he's a dangerous dude. And everybody that you fight in the UFC is going to be dangerous, um, almost without exception. You don't get to this point this part of the, the sport without being something special, you know? So I don't take anybody lightly. Like this is a dangerous dude. This is the, every single fight is the most important fight to me. Um, with that said, I'm more dangerous, you know, and, and I don't care who it is. Like I'm, 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 if you, if you watched how I fought in the Pineda fight, it's going to be a lot more of that. Uh, I'm, I'm the best featherweight in the world and I don't, no one's going to believe me right now. And I don't care. I'm just going to keep proving it. And, uh, and I'm excited for that. I'm kind of at a place where it's like, yeah, I don't care. I'll fight Joe Anderson Brito. I'll fight this guy. I'll fight whoever. I spent eight months. I feel like I've slid all the way back down the mountain. I worked to climb. I'm just going to climb back up it, and I'm going to do it with a smile, you know? Like, this is what we do. I, I love this shit. As you said, never a dull fight. Do you go out there with the mindset of, like, I I'm going to be entertaining? Or is it just that the way that you fight makes it entertaining? No, I think I – think, um, I think fighting is like any other art, you know, it's, it's to some degree, it's a, it's a natural expression of who you are. You can't fake the funk, you know, you can try, but it, when you're, when the lights are on and everything's on the line, like who you are shows. Um, and that's the most, that's the most terrifying and the most beautiful thing about fighting is it's real. You know, you really get to figure out who you are. And I think that me being in exciting fights is just a natural expression of kind of who I am, you know, and I'm thankful for it, but it's not something that I like consciously make the choice to do. You know, it's just, it's instinct and it's um, just part of me. You know, I'm thankful for it. Nice. Last thing for me, you went here, you know, the contract security, everything. I mean, is the goal like to just stay as busy as possible? Is that, is that the hope? It's just, dude, I'll fight every month. I don't care. Like, I'll fight every other week if I can. I'll stay. I sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, I will stay as busy as possible. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I will lose my fucking mind if I have to go, excuse my language. I will lose my mind if I have to go another eight months. Like I'm trying to fight every single, if there's a card in Vegas, I'm ready to be on it. Like at this point, I only want to fight in Vegas because it's an hour, it's a, it's an hour flight from my house. Um, there's no taxes and the whole, uh, apex PI and hotel fighter hotel situation is like perfect. Um, they have it down to a science. It's a beautiful thing. What UFC's done all through COVID and they're still kind of continuing some of those procedures with like the hotel and the shuttle and the apex. It's just, it's perfect. And even if, even if they do the fights at uh, T mobile, like whatever, like this Vegas setup, it's perfect. The taxes is a huge, <laughs> the taxes and the hour flight. Like when I was younger, I'd be like, Oh yeah, let's go to Poland. Let's go to Brazil. Let's go. Where are we fighting next? I'm like, I don't want to do that shit now. I want to fly one hour here, knock someone out, get paid with no taxes and fly one hour home to my girlfriend and my dog and my pool and be left alone. The older you get, the more you just want to get left alone. You just want to be left alone. That's where I'm at. Says, says the 31 year old, right? Right. I mean, hey, I'm not saying I got to figure it out. I'm just saying at this stage, I want to be left alone and it's only getting, it's only moving that direction, you know? Oh, I just meant I'm a lot older, but that's a lot of whiz. <laughs> I wasn't that smart when I was your age. Um, Jim Grease, MMA Weekly. Just want to ask you about that eight months. Yeah. Um, the more time goes by, because it probably felt like eight years. Yeah. At that. So you started to have doubts, I'm sure. At some point, you're wondering, like, you know, where's this going? Where, did you lose confidence at all? Did you lose faith at all? Did you just kind of put it on the back burner? And how, how did you get through that time? Um, 
Yeah. So two things. So to, so the first thing is, yeah, you know, there, there, there are doubts that start creeping in, you know, I could sit here and lie and say like, nah, I was calm, cool, collected. It's like, nah, man, I, I lost sleep for sure. You know, I'm, I'm in the bed next to my girl. She's, she's, she's sound asleep and I'm staring at the ceiling like, fuck dude, I'm 31. I've given my entire life to this thing to be in the UFC. I like in my head, part of my identity is a UFC fighter. And now I'm here coming off a no contest with no contract and no, no other means of really income. You know, like I, I, I was like, I was at a point where it's like, fuck, do I have to go get a job? Like, do I have to go like, do I have to go, do I have to ask my friends if there's openings at their companies and shit? You know, it's like, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it definitely takes, it's definitely, it definitely hurts to go from being like, yeah, uh, last month I was the signed fighter of the UFC chasing his dream. And now I'm a guy and I'm a 31 year old uh, who's unemployed, you know, and I have no, um, immediate prospects, you know, of, of, of doing what I love again. And, and just knowing like, there's a, such a small window of time that you get to do this and they're just fucking stealing it from me. And, uh, it's just, you know, that's really, there's no other way to put it. Like, I'm just, just being stolen from me. Like I'm going to make up for it. I'm still going to cement my legacy, but you just feel every fucking day being stolen from you that you don't have a fight. And it hurts. Yeah. It kept me up at night is the first time is the first time I, when people say they lose, they've lost sleep. Like I, the first time I lost sleep, like I'd keep me up at night, like thinking about the fact that I'm 31 and I, I, I haven't accomplished what I want to accomplish. And now I don't even have the opportunity to do it because I don't have a contract and I haven't fought in six months. You know, the second part of that is, um, and this is why I'm so thankful for guys like Danny Castillo and Uriah Faber. It doesn't matter how you feel. You just go to practice and you just, keep going. No one gives a fuck. Like, it doesn't matter how you feel, you know, like there's, there's days I wake up and I love fighting and there's days I wake up and I hate fighting and both days I show up and both days I get better. And so you just put your head down and you work your ass off before you know it, eight months have passed and you figure it out and you've, you know, you've like finessed a, a, a thing here. I taught a little seminar. I got a, a sponsor to help me out. I'm doing this. I'm, you know what I mean? Like uh, I'm training every day. And before you know, it, I signed a contract. It's bigger than any of the contracts I had before. So the two parts of that, yeah, it, it hurt bad and it kept me up at night and I, I went to some dark places. The second part, I stayed the course and I never I never stopped training. I never stopped getting better. That's important. I, definitely, I, some, fighting's been such a huge thing in your life. You know, from when you're a kid, tough childhood, you're yeah. in the streets fighting. You walk into Alpha Male and you take it this far and here you are, man. And, and then it gets taken away from you, like you said. So that's something that kind of saved you and became who you are. So then here you are back. So when you finally got that call, Man, that must have been the best thing. Yeah, it felt good. I was losing my mind. Um, I, I, I was I was so excited, you know. Um, and it was actually a little hectic because I, I took a fight on like four weeks notice. That fell through. And I took a fight on 10 days notice. No, I'm sorry. I took a fight on, on, on four weeks notice. That fell through. So I took the, the Brito fight. And then that got changed around. And I took a fight on 10 days notice where I was like, all right, fuck it. I'll make the weight. Whatever. It doesn't matter. On, and then that the 10-day notice fell through. And then I got back with, so it was like, you're fighting in four weeks, you're fighting in 10 days, you're fighting in seven weeks, you're fighting in 10 days, you're fighting in seven weeks. It was like, whatever, dude, just fucking book the ticket. I don't care. Like it was, it was like three or four different opponents, three or four different dates. And I said yes to all of it because, uh, like I said, no matter how good or bad things are going, like I'm in the gym three times a day, I'm training, like doesn't matter. Stay the course and, and the hard work pays off. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, brother. Um, you haven't been winless uh, in two, for two fights in a row in your entire career. Yeah. Granted, your last fight was probably you know the yeah. best you've ever looked, yeah. but it was still no contest. Right. First time in your career, it's winless in two fights. Is that yeah. something that's on your mind as you're rolling into this next one? Nah, because a no contest to me isn't a loss, especially because I think that was a good performance by myself. Like, I'm pretty honest. I'll tell you, like there have been performances like I, I'm just I'm just I'm kind of an open book. Like what you see is what you get. Like I, I can't I can't bullshit. So it's like. I'm, I think my performance was fucking sick. My last fight, uh, I'll tell you enough. Like I, I didn't think my performance was very good against um, against Bryce Mitchell, for example. But then I bounced back. I had a great performance against Daniel Pineda. You know, there, there's ups and downs in this sport. That's just that's how it goes. And uh, I I can like I, I've said it so many times. I try to focus on controlling the controllables. I had a great performance. It sucks that. The eye poke happened. I personally think part of it why is I didn't open is because I just split it open with my shin. Uh, he wanted to keep fighting. I wanted to keep fighting. 
doctor made a bad call. That's, that's not really on me. You know, like I did my job. So to me, I'm not winless in two fights. Like I lost, I lost a fight. I was winning a fight and it kind of got stolen from me. And then I'm going to win a fight Saturday. Um, I'll never go back to back losses. And from here on out, it's going to be back to back wins. You know, I just, I just, um, I, I, the, in the eight months, the biggest lesson I've learned is just like not dwelling in the past. Like it doesn't matter, you know, no matter how the Pinedo fight ended or the 12 other fights that ended before that, it doesn't matter. Like the only thing I care about is winning this fight April 30th. Uh, I mean, you got 17 fights in the UFC right now. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I said 13, like right now. I'm like, yeah, the other 16 yeah. fights, that's crazy. Um, to, your, to your opponents too. Yeah. Well, he's going to be making his second appearance in Octagon. Yeah. Do you think that gives you a huge advantage? Uh, you know, him only cut in the show for his second time. I don't know. I, I haven't thought about that, honestly. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking about the advantages I have over him, which I think there's many, um, but I haven't really thought about that. I'm sure it doesn't hurt, you know, but I also don't think that I just think a fight's a fight kind of, it doesn't matter. Like if, if you make it matter that that says UFC on the cage and there's light, then maybe like it, maybe he'll get psyched out by that, but I'm not counting on that. Like a fight's a fight and this dude knows how to fight. He's had, it's not like he, he's had two fights in UFC, but he's had like 12 or 13 fights outside. Like he knows how to fight. He's from Brazil. I'm sure he's been in some fights. Like he, you can look at him. He's not a dude who's, who's worried about getting in a fist fight. So I'm not counting on that. I'm, I'm counting on all my other advantages to beat him. Thank you. Appreciate you, brother. Andre, welcome back. It's been a minute. Yeah, oh, got you. And then you've always been honest with us. You mentioned that uh, things that make you happy don't as much. What have you leaned on lately? What's, what's getting you? Yeah, well, what I was saying is like um, when you first start making money and, and I was a little younger, like I just wanted to buy things. I just wanted things. Like I wanted – like I needed, like if I bought a pair of Vans, I bought a pair of Vans for me and my roommate and one in every color. It's like, cause I need shoes. Like, you know what I mean? Like I like shoes, but it's like, I don't really like shoes that fucking much. Or I like, you know what I mean? Like if I bought, if I went to the store and got like anything, like shoes are an example, comic books, motorcycles, all kinds of shit that like, well, actually motorcycles still make me happy. That's a bad example. Um, I still spend money on motorcycles and my girlfriend doesn't need to know how much. So let's skip over that part. Um, but yeah, I just stopped trying to fill that void with, with, with things like it, it, it's not as, it's not as meaningful. You know what I mean? Like, I still like all the same stuff I used to, but you know, you grow to a place where you realize like, that's not going to fill the void, you know? And really to me, I, I'm not out here trying to give life advice. I still have a void that I'm trying to fill. Um, it's just that the only thing that does it meaningfully is winning fights. Um, and so I've, you know, I've committed my entire being to winning this fight, um, and helping the young guys on the team win fights and, and trying to just set an example and, and do these things that, that actually, like if I'm going to, if I'm going to struggle with trying to fill this void and, and this emptiness that I feel pretty regularly, I'm going to fill it with things that I know are positive and, and create a positive impact, impact for other people. That's excellent, man. Respect. And, um, I think it was Nick Diaz who said, you have to love this so much. You hate it. And you're surrounded by great coaches, legends, former champs. Um, it doesn't matter how you feel, they were saying. Yeah. How do, how, so how do you get up? How do, what's your motivation besides that win and to help out your yeah. and elevate them? Yeah, no, Nick's a legend. Uh, you know, so is Nate, both of those dudes. And, and uh, Nick, Nick hit it on the head. You got to love it so much you hate it. And some days, like I said, some days I wake up and I hate this shit. And some days I wake up and I'm in, I'm in love with it. Like, I'm, I don't just love it. Like, I'm in love with it. Um, but both days I show up and both days I get better. And so it doesn't matter. Like when you feel these, and this isn't for fighting, this is just something I think anybody could take for any career. When you are in love with something, you got to commit a hundred percent and give every piece of yourself to it. That way you can build these habits, right? Like, so you're obsessed with something, right? But that's not going to last forever. And sometimes you don't control that obsessive motivation. So when you're obsessed and in love with something, do it every day and put those practices into place so that in six months when you're maybe not as motivated, you still have those, you still have those procedures in place. You have the discipline to show up every day. It's like, you can't just rely on motivation. It has to be at some point, it has to be discipline. And when the passion hits, you got to run with it. But when it's not there, you rely on the discipline. And I've been doing this shit since I was 19, you know, and so it's nothing. It doesn't matter. When I wake up in the morning, whether I love it or hate it, I'm going to practice at 9.30. Like, it doesn't matter. That's awesome, man. Those are great. And lastly, for me, 
to circle back to your opponent, you had a couple of advantages on him you mentioned. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Um, length, physical frame, experience. Um, uh, fight IQ, cage generalship. Um, I think I'm a better grappler. Uh, and I don't think people think of me as a grappler at all, which is cool. I hope they continue to not think of me as a grappler, but um, I can grapple my ass off and uh, I can wrestle my ass off and I'm comfortable everywhere the fight goes. So I actually think I'm a better striker and a better grappler. Um, and he is a pretty explosive, like tough bulldog dude, but I actually think I'm also a better athlete um, as far as uh, my gas tank uh, and my ex my explosivity. I really, man, I don't want this to sound pretentious, but I really don't see a fight, a part of the fight where I don't have an advantage. I'm better everywhere. And on with that, best of luck on Saturday. Thank you, brother. Just, just a couple of quick, quick ones. When yeah. you said that you'd went to like those dark places in that time when you were waiting to get the contract and things like that, was it the routine of going to the gym or what was it that pulled you out? Was it teammates? Was it your girlfriend? Was the routine? What pulled you out when you started finding that you could recognize that you were in a dark spot? Um, again, I don't want this to sound pretentious um, because I, my team, my girlfriend, my dog, uh, these people that I, that I love, uh, my, my friends, I've had the same friends since I was like 13, 14, 15 years old. Like I've, I don't have a bunch of new friends. Like I have friends that have been with me from the bottom, you know? Um, and as much as I love and value those people, um, no one pulled me out of the dark place except myself like because no one else can you have to do it yourself just like no one else is going to get in this cage and fight for me no one else is going to do this interview for me no one else is going to cut this weight for me um it has to be you so anybody else who's going through some dark shit like you got it you got to recognize that it's it's just you that can do it and it's it's kind of a daunting thing at first um but it's also kind of a reassuring thing and a relieving thing to realize like you have the power to do it you know and so for me it was just biting down and and, and relying on that discipline of staying committed to training and staying the course and keeping promises to, to um, the, the, the keeping my promises to the people that I love, you know, like I, I, I have told the people I love since I was 13 or 14 years old that I'm going to be a UFC featherweight champion and I'm going to do it and everything else is, is, is unacceptable, you know? And so you have to like be, you have to be borderline delusional committed to that. Um, which is what I am, you know what I mean? And uh, so, so that, so myself recognizing my own patterns and staying committed to my, my goals and my promises is what pulled me out of it, you know? And, and again, teammates, friends, girlfriend, um, family, they help, but no one else is going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself. That's awesome. Um, just quickly, I guess about the contract, how many fights did you get on this particular contract? Five, I believe. Yeah. Now, which is a lot, but again, I'm not in a, I wasn't really in a position to like measure dicks and negotiate. I'm like eight months with no uh, income. I'm like, yeah, what do you want? What do you just fucking send me it? I don't care. Whatever. I don't care. Just get me in the cage. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, so I, I'm assuming this whole time you were hitting them up, trying to get things and you weren't getting either. Calls my management back. was, yeah. I let my management handle all that. Yeah. So it's, but it's gotta be weird. You're the whole time you're waiting for something, but then when you get to the negotiating table, they give you more money than you right. actually expected. You yeah. That's got to be kind of a weird, awkward feeling. Yeah, it was like, weird. Like, like they're playing hard to get or something, I guess. But I'm like, dude, if you wanted me, you could have just told me that the whole time. I'm right here, baby. What's up? Like, they're, but they're playing hard to get uh, like most good things do. So whatever. I mean, my, my thought process now is like, yeah, I don't understand why they shelf me for eight months. Um, I, and again, I don't want to seem like I'm being hard on matchmakers sure. and stuff like Yo, the world is fucking crazy right now. There's a pandemic and a war and 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 instability and and life is life is crazy for a lot of people. So I don't know if it was necessarily like I'm I don't want to paint this picture like they hate Andre Feely. The UFC hates Andre Feely and didn't want to have me in the cage. I think I think it was just that I fought my contract out. Um, things are hectic booking fights. There was no openings. Like it was kind of crazy. I had a change in management. You know, I, I'm not like blaming any one person. I just think. Um, you know, sometimes you get dealt a rough hand and, and I had to ride that out for a few months. And my mentality now is like, all right, cool. I didn't get to fight for a few months. Fuck it. I'm going to, in the, those, those eight, in those eight months, what would I have done? One or two fights? I'll make it up this year. Like I'll fight three or four times this year and it will still have 
the same, the same progress that we would have, you know, like really that, that ownership of like, it's up to me. Like I'm, I'm not blaming anyone else. Like I didn't get a fight. I chose to fight my contract out. I didn't get a fight and I'm going to make up for it. It's like, it's, it's, it's just complete acceptance and ownership. So what's the goal, I guess, for the year? How many fights are you looking for? Because you want to make up for that lost time, but you also want to give your time to heal and make sure that you're coming in at your peak performance. Nah, I'm healed. I'm healed. I don't need any time. <laughs> Anyone listening to this, I'm healed. I'm plenty healed. Uh, just fucking book me three fights now. It's fine. Like, I will be as active as they can keep me. I don't care. Like, I'm, I don't need time to heal. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need – I'm not healing from anything. What, he, what heals me is paychecks. Paychecks are healing to me. So I want to fight – if I can fight five times this year, I'll do it. I don't care. Best of luck. Appreciate you.